Welcome everyone to Lingua Latina Tutorials with Mr. K, Pensum D. This video explains the new grammar and syntax found in Chapter 13 of the Lingua Latina Per Se Lustrata series. It is meant to accompany the Latina Disco text available from Focus Bookstore and the Pensum D worksheet available from 50%latin.blogspot.com or christianlanguage.com. So let's get right into the text and look at the new grammar and syntax. We're going to start in line two, where we have uh, Januarius mensis primus. Okay, January, the first month. Uh, what I want to point out here is that all of the months of the year are ad actually adjectives. So Januarius is not a noun. Uh, it's uh, an usaum ending adjective. So when you put it with mensis, it would be January's month. And if you put it together with uh, calendi, which we learn later in this chapter, which is feminine plural, then this becomes uh, calendi januarii. So the, the ending of January will change to match the noun that it's with. And so you should understand all of these months as January's month, February's month. Um, and even though uh, in context here, we're going to, without the, without the noun with it, you can read it as a substantive adjective. Uh, so, Januari Espana, so it can be translated just as January. So, the next feature uh, throughout this section here, lines two through six, we see Februarius Secundus Martius Tertius Aprilis Quartus Maius Quintus Junius Sextus Julius Septimus Augustus Octavus September Nonus October October Decimus, November, un decimus, December, mensis, duo decimus, ac prostremus. So uh, what we have here um, are many, several months that are uh, in the first and second declension, like Januarius, Februarius, Martius, the ones with us endings, skip aprilis, then Maius, Junius, Julius, Augustus. Those are all first and second declension adjectives, so the usa um adjectives. The... The months that have, that are third declension adjectives, which would uh, decline like brevis, are aprilis, and then also september septembris, october octobris, november novembris, december decembris. So those months will decline like, uh, like brevis. So when you match them up with their nouns, well, we'll need to remember that. You'll see that uh, later in this chapter. Uh, that the, that they get the third declension endings. Uh, the same in the same section, we uh, we see these three months of September, October, November, December, which look similar to numbers we've already seen: septem, octo, noem, and decem. But we see that they're not linked up with the right numbers. So September, which is seven, is not the seventh month, but the ninth month. And uh, even though they are derived from the numbers you'd expect, they um, they don't link up because in the old Roman calendar, the ancient Roman calendar, March, Martius, started the month. So if you count from March, then September does become the seventh month, October the 8th, November the 9th, and Dece December the 10th months, which explains the derivation of those numbers. The, uh, the months are explained here with more ordinal numbers. Remember, ordinal numbers are the ones that tell us the order of things. So We've already learned uh, primus secundus tertius quartus, and then now we see uh, the fifth through the twelfth, uh, quintus sextus septimus octavus nonus decimus undecimus and duo decimus. Uh, these are adjectives as well, usa um adjectives, so first and second declension adjectives, and they will match the noun that they go with. The next feature in the text, the new grammar and syntax, is in line number seven. Here we have unus anus duo decum menses vel trecentos sexaginta quinque dies habet. So one year has 12 months, uh, or in other words, uh, 365 days. So the uh, here we see the word well, okay, which means the same thing as uh, out in, the, in our translation. We'd still translate this as or, but it has a different sense. 
uh, you use, well actually comes from welle, which means to want. So a way to translate this is, or if you will. It's, it's another way of saying, like in other words, or if you please. So one year has 12 months, or if you will, uh, explaining further uh, as another option here, uh, 365 days. Compare that with the use of out in line 28, where we see, um, uh, where is it here? Right here we go. Duo te treginta out unde treginta dies tantum habet. So February is shorter. It has uh, 28 or 29 days only. So th these are not, um, you can't say like 28 or if you will. It's not another, another way of explaining 28. It's 29. These are exclusive options. It's one or the other. So that's the difference between well and out. Out gives you one or the other option. Well gives you an alternative, uh, uh, an acceptable alternative. So let's go back um, now into line 22 for our next feature where we have uh, Nunc autem mensis primus est januarius, septembere getur mensis nonus est, uh, et cetera. And uh, I want to point out that verbs here, we're going to start to learn some new tenses of verbs in a new tense of, new tenses of verbs in this chapter. So uh, we're going to learn all the features of a verb. And there are only five characteristics of a verb that you need to identify it fully. And that, uh, um, those are person, number, tense, mood, and voice. So for example, person and number for est, uh, this is third person singular from sum. And so if you were going to conjugate sum, you'd have uh, sum s est as first, second, and third person singular s being the third singular, and then plural sumus estis sunt, uh, first, second, and third person plural. So here we have a third person singular verb, but that's not enough to explain it fully. We need to know the tense, the mood, and the voice to know this verb fully. Uh, the tenses that we've learned so far, we've only learned the present tense. Only things, things have only been happening right now. So est is present tense. And then um, the mood, uh, we only have four moods in Latin, you've learned the indicative mood, which is just your standard way of indicating things in the world that are true, factual things. And then um, you've also seen the imperative mood, the commanding mood, the, where you say something with uh, commanding emotional quality in your voice. And, um, and you've seen the infinitive, uh, which uh, has no person and number, and you translate with to, T-O, in front of uh, the verb. And the, verb, the infinitive of this, est, would be esse, to be. Uh, the voice, uh, we've, only, we've learned uh, active and passive voice. And so here we have the uh, active voice. So to fully explain this verb, you'd have third person singular, present, active, indicative uh, for est. Now compare that with uh, line, with the verb in um, line tw 19 and 22, here we have tempora antiquo martius mensis primus erat, and then in line 21, errant. So in uh, tempora antiquo, in ancient time, in the, in, in the old days, March was the first month. So if I were going to give uh, the full form of erat, it would, like est, be third person singular, but it would um, not be present. Here is our first past tense that we're learning in is called the imperfect tense, imperfect, not completed tense. So um, third person singular, imperfect, it is also active and indicative, uh, and that would fully explain the form of this verb here. It, uh, for line 21, where we have errant, uh, so December, uh, so these guys, uh, October, November, December, were uh, the 8th, ninth, and 10th months were third person, plural, rather than singular, imperfect active indicative. Everything else is the same. The only thing that's different here between erat and errant is singular and plural. Singular for erat, errant is plural. Okay, the next feature I want to point out is in line 30, where we have is mensis ani brevissimus est. This month is the shortest of the year. Brevissimus 
is what we call a superlative adjective. Superlative, think of the word super being very um, extreme or very high, very, uh, very much. And um, that's what superlatives are. They often end in isimus or imus. And they tell you um, either it could be translated as very or the most. So this is uh, very short. This month is a very is the very short one of the year, but here in this context, it actually does mean the short test est on the end, uh, which indicates the superlative. Compare that brevissimus with brevi or shorter. This is the comparative. This is the superlative. The other form of this adjective is uh, the what we call the positive form. Positive of brevi or is brevis. Brevis short. Brevior, comparative, shorter, brevissimus, superlative, the short test. These, uh, these forms um, you're going to see throughout this chapter uh, in uh, different ways, and you'll see them further in, in the next chapter. The next feature that I want to point out is uh, in line 33, and that is the way that the Romans would say one half one-third, one-quarter, etc. So we have sex menses sunt dimidia parzani, tres menses quarta parzani. So six months are dimidia pars, one half of the year. Three months um, are one-fourth part of the year. So if you wanted to see, say one-third part of the year, you could probably already guess you're going to use the, uh, the ordinal number matched up with pars. So the third, you'd have a third part for one third, ter tertia pars, and a one fifth would be quinta pars, etc. The next feature is in line thirty-five, where we have dies est dum sol in caelo est prima pars die est mane. So a day, it is a day while the sun is in the sky. It is day while the sun is so dies we see. In the margin is our last, uh, the last declension of nouns that we're going to see. It's the fifth declension. It is most of the time feminine, but here, dies, we see our one exception. So don't let that throw you off and make you think that the fifth declension is going to have many masculines. It doesn't. It is all feminine uh, except for dies. So, um, and we see here the genitive form of dies, diei. So the first part of the day, this is our partitive genitive again. The first part of the day is the morning, mane. So um, the full declension of dies is in the, at the end of this chapter. And it, it would be dies, diem, diei, diei, die. And the plural dies, dies, dierum, diebus, diebus. So the next feature, uh, I've already read it here with mane, is that we have a noun here, mane, which means in the morning, or morning, that is indeclinable. Indeclinable, so you see in the margin there's, there's no genitive with it. it. It is one of those rare nouns in Latin that has no endings. So in the morning, uh, before the morning, during the morning, any form of morning, that you can anticipate that would have a different case would have a different case is still going to be money, and uh, so we call this money word indeclinable. And you'll meet a few others. There aren't many, but you'll meet a few others before you finish Familia Romana. The next feature is in line fifty-two. Let's go ahead to fifty-two. And we see cum um, exigua pars luna tantum videtur luna nova esse dicitur. So when um, a small part of the moon is seen, is only a small part of the moon is seen, uh, the moon is said to be nova, is said to be new. I want to uh, take that line and compare it uh, with um, the way the Romans would say, uh, they say that the the moon is new. So here we have a nominative with dicitur esse. It is said to be. It is said to be this thing. And we, and we get a kind of a, a predicate nominative of sorts here 
where we stay in the nominative case after the infinitive. It is said to be new. However, if we were going to use the active form of dictator to say, he says, he says that the, the moon is new, then we would go into the accusative infinitive construction. Dicit lunam novam esse. He says that the moon is new. Uh, so I just want to point out that you can, you can have with the passive of dicit, dicitur is said to be, and you could have the nominative form afterward, as opposed to the infinitive, accusative infinitive construction with just the active dicit. Uh, the next feature I want to point out is in line 54, where we have die quinto decimo post lunam nova, luna plewa, plena est et formam habet literae. Oh, okay, so on, um, here we have on the 15th day after the new moon, the, the moon is, the, the full moon, the moon is full and has the form or shape of the letter O. So die here is an ablet, die quinto decimo. All of this is in the ablative case. There's no preposition with it, so we have to give it a special name. The name for this construction, when you say like on the 15th day, the way the Romans would describe time as, a, as an on a specific, at a specific time, on this day, they used um, the ablet, what we call the ablative of time. So the reason that this is in the ablative, we would say, is because it is uh, expressing the time is the ablative of time on the 15th day. The next feature is in line 57, where we have dies mensis primus calendae nominatur, the, um, which is the first day of the month, is called, uh, calendae is called the calends. So the name the Romans gave to the first day is the, the calends. In English, just spelled out as K-A-L-E-N-D-S. From that word, we do get our word calendar. And um, it's a Greek word. Um, the Greeks did not have a uh, calends. There's, uh, there's actually a phrase in Latin, uh, ad calendas graecas, which meant basically till hell freezes over or never because there's no Greek calends. So the, um, the first month is called the calends. First of the day of the month is called the calends. And notice that it is nominative. It's plural. You see in the margin that it's feminine plural. It's one of those plural only words. And um, in the next line, we see that if you want to say the first of January, you would say calenda januarii, January's calends. The, um, the next feature I want to show is they, they, the Romans, besides naming the first day of the month, they named two other important days. Uh, the one in line 62, here we see uh, dies tertius decimus post calendas idus nominatur. So the 13th day after the calends is called the Ides. That's only in the month of January. There are other months where the Ides fall on the 15th day, and we're going to learn that in just a minute. But uh, So on, in the month of January, the calends is on the 1st. That's always true for every month. The calends is on the 1st. The Ides, de uh, it depends on the month. But in January, it's the 13th. Most months, it's the 13th. And um, the uh, next, and notice also that that is feminine plural, idus iduum, so it's from the fourth declension. It's nice to know that all the names of the special days are feminine. It helps to remember them, feminine plural for all of them, even though they're not, not all the same declension. The next feature is in line 69. Uh, and so we go to the next page, and we have um, ante dius dicitur nonai. So the the other day that is important to the Romans in the calendar, the named day is the the nones, n o n e s. So uh, ides spelled out i d e s nones n o n e s. And uh, so the dies here we have the full sentence, dies nonus ante dius dicitur nonai. So the ninth day before the Ides is called the Nones. And you can tell that Nones comes from Nones, the ninth. And that's the ninth day by Roman reckoning, which includes uh, both days, you're, the count day you're counting from and the day you're counting to. That's how they would count nine, nine days. So um, we have three important days in the month. The first is the Calends, the 13th or 15th, which is the Ides, and the fifth or the seventh, which is the Nones. 
And um, the months that ha uh, have the Ides on the 15th day and the Nones on the 7th, uh, you can remember them by a little poem, which goes like this, in March, July, October, May, the Ides fall on the 15th day, the Nones the 7th, but all besides have two less days for Nones and Ides. Uh, less uh, should be, grammatically should be fewer in that sentence, but it wrecks our rhythm, so we will uh, let it go and um, keep our poem with uh, less. So uh, March, July, October, May, those are the special months that have the Ides on the 15th, and that's important especially for, because we know that Julius Caesar was murdered on the Ides of March, and that that was the 15th of that month because the Ides fall on 15th day. If he were murdered on the Ides of, uh, on the Ides of uh, June, uh, it would have been uh, the 13th day rather than the 15th. So now I want to look at uh, line 73, where we see the odd construction the Romans used to describe uh, a day of the month. Whereas we say, uh, if we're going to point out any day of the month, we say the 1st of January, the 2nd of January, the 3rd of January, the 4th of January. We just count with ordinal numbers through the month. It's quite a simple system. The Romans had a very complicated system, and they always counted um, either the special day itself, either the calends, the ides, or the knowns, I, calends, knowns, and ides, or they counted until the days until. If you weren't on one of those three special days, you were always counting to the next one. They were always looking forward to their next special moment. And so here we see dies octavus ante calendas januarias qui dicitur ante diem octavum calendas januarias est dies ani brevissimus. So the eighth day before the calendars of January, which is called, and here is the way the Romans, the Romans didn't say dies octavus ante calendas januarias, which would make sense, the eighth day before the calendars of January, they said, Everything in the accusative here, uh, they said, ante diem octavum, et octavum, calendas januarias. Literally, uh, before the eighth day, before, the, before January's calends. And, um, but that's the way they did it, so we have to, <laughs> we have to learn that, that structure. And you see in the margin how they abbreviated that as AD, and then they, the Roman numeral for the 8th, and then uh, Calenda Januarias abbreviated as Cal, U, or, no, here, sorry, this is U instead of Januarius, but it would be the same thing, except it would be Jan here if we were giving this date. So, um, and the rest of that sentence is, is the shortest day of the year. That's how that sentence ends. So, uh, now we're going to look at the way the Romans said a variety of dates. So looking at line, let's start, we're going to show you how they said January 1st, January 13th, I mean January 5th and January 13th, the, the, the calends, the knowns, and the eyes. So in line 58, we see how they said January 1st, calendae januarii. And in line 63, we see how they said the eyes of January, this is how they would say January 13th, idus januarii, again January's ides. Notice the endings, quite different, but they're, they do match because idus is fourth declension, nominative plural here, and januarii, and, oh, and it's feminine, right? So januarii is nominative plural feminine as well. So January's ides, idus januarii. And then the way to say January 5th, which happens to be the knowns of January, is in line uh, 69. And we see here that it is nonai januarii. So that's how you'd say January 1st, January 5th, and January 13th. You wouldn't say uh, primus januarius or something like that. Uh, the next feature that I want to point out is in line 66, and that is how you would say in the uh, month of March or in the month of October. You would use the ablative of time, just like we saw earlier, uh, and um, you'll see this here in um, okay, the line 65 to 66. Said idus martiais dies est quintus decimus mensis martii 
nam mense martio cetera idus non dies tertius decimus. Sed quintus decimus post calendas est. Okay, long sentence, but it says, but on the ides, but the ides of March is the 15th day of March for, and then we have mense martio, in the month of March. Ablative singular for both of these, right? So mensis is a masculine noun. So in the month of March, mense martio, in March's month, likewise in May and in July and in October, uh, the ides is not on the 13th day, but on the 15th day after the calendar. So um, the other feature is notice how oct October has a different ending here, right? October in the month, mense October in the month of October. Why does it have this long I on the end? It's because, uh, as you saw earlier, Octo I mentioned earlier, October is one of those months that is third declension. It's a third declension adjective, and therefore the ablative singular is going to have this long e, just like brevis. If you're going to say in a short month, it would be mense brevi. And if you're going to say in the month of October, in October's month, you'd say mense octobri. Okay, so the uh, last new feature that we're going to look at, we're going to skip all the way ahead to line 140. And here we see that uh, Emilia puerum dormira vele putat. Emilia thinks, putat, same as cogitat, thinks that the boy, Wele Dormira, wants to sleep. Wele is in, uh, an infinitive from Wult. You see here in the margin, it says Wult, Wolut. He wants, they want, uh, the infinitive, to want, Wele. It's in the accusative infinitive construction, so we translate she thinks that the boy, subject of the clause, that the boy wants to sleep. If you were going to look this up in most dictionaries, the dictionary form of wele would be the first person singular present active indicative. So it would be, from Wolt would be wolo, I want. So if you were going to look this up in most dictionaries, in our dictionary, uh, it's listed in the dictionary, or in the index at the end of familia, it's listed as wele, because Orberg lists the infinitive first, but most of your college dictionaries <coughs> will have the lexical form, the, the uh, present active indicative first person singular. So you'd look this up under V-O-L-O, -L -O, WOLO. And that is the end of uh, the new features for chapter 13.